anytime we have a sequence of percent changes, students tend to make a lot of common mistakes. Grab your scratch paper, follow along with me. The wholesale price of a new laptop is P dollars. We see that variable there. The laptop is sold at a retail price, 60% greater than the wholesale price. During a sale, the price of the laptop is reduced by 25%. What is the sale price of the laptop in terms of P? Before we start working on anything, I want to point out that we can use the plugging numbers technique, plugging in numbers technique, and here's how we know. So in the purple on the left, it asks, what is our Q that we can plug in here? The clue I told you to look out for is when you see variables in the answer choices. So what's our variable in this problem? It's P, the letter P. And all of our answer choices include the letter P, don't they? All of our answer choices include the letter P. So this question is a good candidate for the plugging in numbers technique. There are other ways to solve it, absolutely. This is also a question that many students tend to make mistakes on. Anytime we have a sequence of percent changes, students tend to make a lot of common mistakes. So let's see if we can use our plugging in numbers technique to avoid mistakes and get the right answer. Next thing we need to look at is the rules of the problem. What kind of numbers can we plug in? Well, we don't have anything directly stating requirements, but we do need to think critically for a second. We're talking about the price of a laptop computer. So that price, the money you have to pay, logically is going to be a positive number. Does that make sense? You're not going to have a zero price. And if you tried, you're going to have a lot of uh, inconveniences working out this problem. You won't have a zero price. You won't have a negative price. The price is going to be a positive number because that's how we sell things. We charge positive amounts of money. Great. So let's try it out. Here we go. We can plug in whole numbers. We could plug in fractions if we want. We need to plug in a positive number. We cannot plug in a negative number or zero. But we want to pick a smart number. We want to pick a number that is going to make this problem easy for us to work with. And there was a clue for what to choose when we work with percents. So take a moment and pick out what number you think would be a good idea to use. Since we're working with percents, a very convenient number to use would be a multiple of 100. In fact, I'm going to use 100 itself. So my smart number is going to be that P equals 100. That's the number I'm going to plug in. And remember, write that down on your scratch paper. Now let's solve the problem. So our computer screen is represented on the left. On our scratch paper, we're going to write down P equals 100. The wholesale price of a new laptop is P dollars. Now it's $100. The laptop is sold at a retail price that is 60% greater than the wholesale price. Here's the beauty of picking an easy number. What is 60% more than 100? Well, 60% of 100 is 60. If we break 100 into 100 parts and take 60 of them, 60% of 100 is 60%. So if it's going to be 60% greater, that means we're going to have the original price 100 plus a $60 increase. $160 is the retail price. Then we're going to have a sale. Just following along in the problem. During a sale, the price of the laptop is reduced by 25%. So we'll start at that retail $160 price, and we need to subtract 25% or one fourth. Perhaps you notice that 160 is just 16 times 10. And a fourth of 16 is four. 
So a fourth of 160 is $40. If that's not easy for you to see during the exam with a little mental math, easy to work out on a calculator using the on-screen calculator. So 160 minus 40 is $120. That's the final sale price, and that's the one that we want to make sure stands out. Our final step is now going to be to compare that with the answer choices. So what am I going to do? I'm going to take my answer choices. I'm going to plug in P equals 100. So what's going to happen? Answer choice A is going to become 1.1 times 100. Easy to calculate, right? Multiply 100 just means move the decimal point. So that's $110. In fact, many of us probably don't have to actually work out all of the answer choices to see what's going to happen. Look what happened. 1.2 times 100 is $120. That's exactly the same as that target value we were looking for. And we can see by looking ahead at the remaining answer choices that none of them are come out, going to come out to be the same. So our correct answer here is 1.2 times P. Again, is there another way we could have solved this? Sure. And some of us could do so accurately. Some of us would struggle or find it stressful. Even if you are very good at working with percent changes and multiplying to get the answer algebraically, it could be that plugging in actual numbers is going to be a little bit faster and a little bit simpler. So I encourage you to get to know this technique and try it out on many, many different questions. Get a feel for how it can help you have an alternative way to solve algebra problems. So what we do, step one, we picked out a number that would be a good, easy choice to work with. Step two, we solved the question using our plugged in number. Step three, we use the process of elimination and plug that number into the answer choices. We didn't need to get to step four because we were already down to one answer choice.